Hey, what's up, YouTube? Mike from Mass here. Any fish guys? That's right, New England fish guys coming at you. Starting off the series. What's in your backyard? I'm psyched. Pumped tonight, even though the Patriots lost. Bummer. I'm still pumped tonight because tonight, myself, Mass Aquariums, and MA Fish Guy are starting off our series. New England fish guys, what's in your backyard? And we're starting off this series. The whole series is going to be about native fish to whatever state you live in. We're going to start it off with our state, and we're going to start covering a bunch of states. And basically the series is going to be on, you know, what's in your backyard? What can you catch in your home state and put in your aquarium, take care of? How do you breed them, sex them? How do you catch them? What kind of habitat do, do, do they live in? You know, all that stuff. And what is going to happen is we're going to have a species. I'm going to go over some facts. You're going to have to go to over to MA Fish Guys channel to go over some of the other facts. And you're going to get a complete care sheet on the entire fish from soup to nuts, the works. So to start the series off, we're going to start it off with a fish that is native to the Massachusetts area in New England all the way down to the Chesapeake Bay but this particular fish you can find in Massachusetts and catch uh, first of all I want to say if you do live in Massachusetts any native species that is established in Massachusetts you will need a permit to catch and house in your aquarium now that being said you know catch the fish, put them in your aquarium. I'm sure the state is not gonna come knocking on your door. But I would not catch and sell these fish without a permit. So, first series, first fish, the tessellated darter fish. Beautiful, beautiful little fish. It gets its name because of the quick, fast movements it makes on the bottom of streams. It's darting all, all across the place. It is a relative of the cousin of the yellow perch. It is a very tiny fish. It grows about three and a half inches in length. The top of the fish is an olive color and the bottom of the fish can be yellow to gray and it has little black, almost like X's all the way across its body. Now the habitat of this fish, it prefers streams and rivers but can be found along lake shores and prefers mud sand or gravel bottom which is pretty much everywhere and now this fish it is very very tiny and has a lot of prey anything from largemouth smallmouth bass perch uh, birds you know any fish which is bigger than three and a half inches will prey on this fish. That's why it's very, very hard to find, uh, very hard to catch. But right now, what I'm gonna go over is I'm gonna go talk about how to catch this fish and how to put it in your tank and make it survive. Now, if you wanna finish this care sheet on how to sex and breed this fish, you need to go over to MA Fish Guy's channel and he's gonna give you the rest of the care sheet and you'll have a complete care sheet on this entire fish and the series is going to be great. So, let's start off. Tessellated darter fish. I want to go to my chichi real quick to give you guys the Latin name. Ethelostoma omsteady. Right, like I always say, say that three times fast, but that's a Latin name. This is the tessellated darter fish. What does this fish eat? Now, this fish is going to be three, three and a half inches max, so you can imagine what it's going to eat. It's going to eat mosquitoes, mosquito larva. There's not going to be many fish that this fish is going to be bigger than that it can eat. Uh, fleas, uh, aquatic worms, any really tiny, microscopic, anything that this fish can get a hold of, it's going to eat. It also eats green algae, which is good for your aquatic fish tank at home because it might take care of some of the algae in your tank, if you have it. Now, so, I went over the habitat, streams and rivers, and also lake shores. By lake shores, I mean <clears throat> the shores of your lake. Anything really, really shallow. Now, I'm a fisherman. 
So I know where these fish hang out. Any type of small fish is gonna come in real close to shore, needs cover, behind rocks, under rocks. So this fish can be very, very difficult to catch. But I do have a way to catch this fish. I've caught many fish like this before. Now, I don't have a two liter bottle with me, but pretend this milk jug is a two liter bottle. Now, you take a two liter bottle, pretend this is a two liter bottle, and you wanna cut the top off, right? Now, you wanna invert the top, and you wanna staple this all along the top. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some bread in here. Or, if you have some fish food, put some fish food in here. Now what's gonna happen is these tiny little fish, the tessellated darter, are gonna swim in the front, eat the bread, and they're not gonna be able to find their way out. You're gonna submerge this down in preferably one and a half to two feet of water in your stream, river, or lake shore. And these fish are gonna go in here to eat the bread, and they're not gonna be able to find their way out. Drop this in at six, seven, eight o'clock at night, come back the next morning, I guarantee, I don't guarantee that you're gonna have a tessellated darter in here, but I guarantee you will have a lot, a lot of bait fish, which basically the tessellated darter is. If you drop this in a stream or a river, you'll have a better chance of catching this fish. Once you catch this fish, tessellated darter fish, it is gonna be awesome for your tank. You put this in there, it's almost, I've done a lot of research, it's almost gonna be like a little Siamese algae eater. They're very tiny, they're very, they dart around and they're gonna eat whatever they can eat and they're gonna eat algae. They're gonna scurry around on the bottom, clean up all your detritus, you know, they're very opportunistic feeders because most of the time they are prey. So whatever they can get their jaws on, they're gonna eat because their lifespan is very short as you can see, birds swooping down, big largemouth bass, scooping them up, you know. They wanna eat and they wanna eat quick and they wanna eat whatever they can get their jaws on because their lifespan is limited. So, once you get them in your tank, well, let me go back real quick. When you catch them, putting them in your tank, you wanna acclimatize them and I recommend don't just put them in your bag or your bucket and get them to temp. I recommend the drip acclimatize method because these fish range from such a temperature wise, being from Massachusetts and the New England area, you know, they go from anywhere water temp down to, you know, low to high 30s, all the way up to high 80s, low 90s. So depending on what time of year you catch them in, whether it's the winter, the fall, the summer, or the spring, you really want to catch them, put them in a bucket, get some uh, airline tubing, tie it off or clamp it, and slowly drip your water from your tank into this bucket for maybe, I would say, like a minimum of like 45 minutes to an hour. Get them to temp, you want them to live, and then uh, go ahead and put them, put them in your tank. And uh, I really think they'll thrive, and they're gonna do great. So. What's in your backyard? What's in my backyard? What's in MA Fish Guy's backyard? Massachusetts, tessellated darter fish. If you wanna know how to sex these fish, breed these fish, and more care of these fish, you need to go over to MA Fish Guy's channel, check it out, he'll complete the care sheet, and uh, he'll tell you everything you need to know to get these fish going on in your tank, and making them survive, and getting them to breed so you can have multiple tessellated darters in your tank and uh, that's about it so this is mike from mass any fish guys go check out ma fish guy for the second part of this series i hope you liked it i'm out